person who claims to be an expert on all subjects, who thrives on that feeling of superiority, well, chances are we all have at least one smarty pants in our life. But what if you're raising one or what if you're married to one? My next guest is here with On the Ground Strategies to Living with a Know-It-All. Studio 5 relationship contributor Dr. Matt Townsend is ready to offer his insight. And of course, this never comes no, up no. with the clients that you work oh, with. Oh, no, never even no. heard. This is a new one. This is a brand new topic. Never heard out of it. thin air. Uh, fair to say, it's difficult. It's a challenge to live with someone who Super slips hard. into this mentality. Well, if you think of it that way, or it's a great blessing because you have been given the gift from heaven. <laughs> to have somebody that knows everything. So call Jeopardy and let's make some money on this guy. Let's capitalize right. on this opportunity. What would you say, Matt, is the first step to embracing, loving, and really jiving with this type of personality? Relax first, take a deep breath. So don't take offense, take a breath. Okay. Because if you're not careful, you'll be offended by it and then your fight or flight kicks in. And when you start fighting with a know-it-all, it's going to get ugly. It's going to get really <laughs> ugly. So take a deep breath. Slow down. I always, I always try to take a deep breath just so I don't react. Mm -hmm. Let the wave of your frustration pass. I even smile. Smiling creates endorphins. Does this look natural? It's, even if Is it's fake. It? You know what's great? Even if it's fake, it's sending a cue to the other person that I'm not liking you. And then, by the way, they're going to be curious, and they're going to know that they don't know what I'm thinking. So we're already going to put them in a weird position because now I'm smiling, thinking something, and they don't know what it is. So they're on their heels a little mm -hmm. bit trying to calculate where you're going. But even better, it's creating endorphins, so I feel better. The breathing kind of right. makes it so I get a little centered. And then that'll help us move on to really think through what we need to do with this. How, maybe we'll get into this, but how does the patience card come into play? Because oh. if you're living, it's, it's one thing to huge. associate the know-it-all yeah. now and then. Mm -hmm. but if you're living with one, this is going to require that daily yeah. discipline. And you can handle it when you're strong and you've got a lot of energy energy and discipline sure, in you but when you know when it's nine o'clock at night and then he's telling you how to do something that you've done five thousand times then you're gonna blow it, it hit you yeah is there a benefit in trying to understand where they're coming from yeah and what I always do is I want you to just try to understand all of the whys why do they act that way and why does it bug you because if they act that way because they're insecure and they're compensating it probably shouldn't bug you if they're doing it because they're ignorant and they don't know socially that there's a better way, it probably shouldn't bug you either. So there's a reason it's bugging you and there's a reason they do it. Because both of the whys that you just answered, the um, insecurity mm -hmm. and the incompetency, yeah. those both kind of conjure up feelings of compassion. Exactly. Right? And if you had compassion, that will change how you're going to go about fixing it, sure. dealing with it. But also figure out why do you react to it? Is it? Are they hitting this nerve that you are already insecure, that you don't do th certain things well, and then this person always claims to know how to do it? So deal with kind of your own insecurity. Why do you act that way? And try to figure out really why why do they do it? Do they not know better? Is it social? Is it emotional? Are they trying to compensate? Are they ignorant to it? Do they not know they do it? Because each one of these we would want to fix differently. Is this a suck it up, deal with it, live with it forever, or are there situations when you can it can pay off to yeah. call it out and address it? No, yes. You've got you gotta kinda decide no, yes. yes and no. You gotta decide if we're gonna deal with it, right? So if it really needs to be addressed, there's two things we gotta do. If it needs to be addressed, then we're gonna we're gonna rope it, I call it. Just like you're going to get on that horse and go chase that heifer. And we're going to get it, and we're going to get it and tie this bad boy down. And we're going to. you say heifer? Yeah. Okay. To yeah. a nine month pregnant uh -huh. lady. Oh, oh sorry. Da, da, da. I didn't mean you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, but you got to deal with it, right? And yeah. if it's your husband and, the, and they're always doing it, and we got to talk about it, then let's, let's figure out the best time to do it. It probably wouldn't be in the moment. Sure. It sure. probably wouldn't be with a high emotion. I would make sure you point out a lot of data. Did you notice that when we were talking about this and this and this, that you started advising me on it and I didn't even ask you for advice? I like that word advising. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, help us with the, the vocabulary because I can't say you're a know-it-all. No, you're a know-it-all. Yeah, the, by the way, that's an interpretation. So the minute you go to the interpretation instead of the data, the data is very kind of, it's, uh, it's, it's not as attacking. It's not as aggressive. So did you notice on that conversation, I said this, and then you immediately took over and started telling me what I needed to know. By the way, one reason men tend to do that is when men communicate, we tend to communicate with hierarchy. So men don't usually ask other men questions, like unless you're at the doctor. Then you ask your doctor, is this swollen? Um, something like There's that. There's my I'm favorite not, line. I'm never using that line again. <laughs> but when men are asked a question, you obviously must want information. So it puts the man in the hierarchy so he starts to tell you. So even a hypothetical, I'm complaining about so-and-so who hurt my feelings. Why would she do that? Why would she say that immediately? Well, 
Yeah. Because a man would never say, why do you think Stacy does that? The man would never p propose it that way or, or push it that way. Women will do it to bond. We just want to bond about the issue. Yeah, we don't want an answer. But men are, are going to take it as you want a position in hierarchy. So when you give them feedback, just give them the data. When you do that, it makes me feel like you're trying to tell me I'm doing something wrong. What is your desire when you're doing this? And try to just understand it. And then, by the way, tie it down rope it down, tie it down, so we all know that you giving me advice when it's unsolicited isn't what I want. Mm -hmm. And once we kind of tie that down, then you can start teasing about it, joking about it, pointing it out more, and showing them how to do it. So you've either got to rope it or learn to cope with it and just walk away and think happy thoughts. Rope or cope? It's mm -hmm. a bumper sticker. Yeah, put nice that on job. your van. What about socially? I'm going to need a van here one of these <laughs> yeah, days. Yeah, you are. I'm going to need a van one of these Slow days. Slow down, pace what yourself. What about socially Brooke? if you're in the moment? Maybe you've had that conversation yeah. on the side about your private relationship, but socially you're in a situation where you see this trait coming out and you recognize it's offending people or it's kind of the wet blanket in the, in the room. Is there a way to diffuse it in the moment or is it a save it for later? Um, I, would, I would probably go touch the person okay. if you're that close. Okay. Bring him close, and let's, and then say something like, "Let's just let, let's just let Stacy finish." Okay. Or, but I wouldn't try not to embarrass him. This sure. is why it might be better to let it happen and then do it offline, so that we can understand. Remember, if they're not doing it out of maliciousness and they don't know why they they keep being the know-it-all, then um, like it, it's a big deal. My wife, all the time before we go in somewhere, she'll say, "Make sure we let everyone else talk," and I'm like that's kind of rude. Like, you think I always, <laughs> but she's right. Yeah. So just think of others, think of others. And she just gently points that out. Final strategy, return to your home keys. What does that mean? Yeah, I remember taking type back in the day when we used to learn type. I love And she would always say, Kate, go to your home key, your home row. Uh -huh. And we'd all go there and then we'd do some five minute drill yeah. to see how fast you could go. And then at the end of the drill, she'd say, now return to your home keys. And every time I'd return, I felt so much better because I had done the drill and I'm back. So one of the keys to this is, if you have an intense relationship with anybody, learn to return home and get back to your nice self with them. Don't hold the grudge for days, don't hate them, don't keep perso you know, personalizing this. Get back to your high self so that I can then still love the person, care for the person, serve the person, be the person I want to be. So I want to get back home, not necessarily for you, so, but so that I don't have the anger and the frustration with you anymore. I love that. We've got to get back home. Good stuff. Return to the home keys. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Huge. Matt. This was awesome. Thanks, you hit Brett. it out of the park as Thank usual. You. And rumor is your date night is filling up. Filling up. you got to get there. It's going to be so fun. We're going to talk about a lot of these differences, how to cope with the differences between men and women. It's uh, it, Go to matttownsend.com. It's October 27th, 7 to 9 at Olympus Junior High. It's... It's my favorite, this is my favorite topic of all topics. This it's, is one of the this topics. This is the funniest stuff I do. When I've heard you speak around this topic, yeah. and I think it's some of the best stuff it's that you so do. It incredible. helps couples of all mm -hmm. ages and yeah. stages, seasons of life. Yeah. So make this your date night for the month it's of October. Huge. You won't regret it. We'll link you over to Matt's website so you can get those tickets and save your seat. Thank you, my friend. Thanks, Brooke.